Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Before we begin, we have a few basic housekeeping items. We want to bring your attention to an important update to the original schedule. There was an error with the Australian Times for the New York sessions, F and H, on the original schedule. Please visit our website at www.gadmc.org for the updated one. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled. We encourage you to post questions in the Q&A box for our presenter. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captioning. If you would like to hear the presentation in another language, please click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use the hashtag GADMCONF in your posts about the conference on social media to help spread the word. A short evaluation will be made available as you exit the presentation. Your feedback is valuable to us and it will help to shape the next GADMAC conference. Finally, a reminder that this video recording and all other presentations will be available later this year after they have been properly edited. It is our privilege to welcome Warren Hess, the Associate Director and Disaster Coordinator of our gold sponsor, the American Veterinary Medical Association. He will be providing an update on the AVMA Veterinary First Responder Certificate Program. Warren. Thank you very much. I uh, very much uh, appreciate the GADMC for uh, inviting me to speak. And welcome to this very brief introduction to the American Veterinary Medical Association's Veterinary First Responder Certificate Program. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand what the certificate program is, how it works, how it, and how it is, it's being used in the United States of America. About a decade ago, it became evident to the AVMA that the United States needed to move from a national veterinary response team model to local teams at the state level. The AVMA then set out to determine how to best make this transition. Prior to this time, the AVMA had helped to fund and equip a handful of veterinary medical assistance teams. The AVMA made the difficult de decision to discontinue these national teams and begin to support educational efforts that would lead to a better prepared teams at the local level. The AVMA Veterinary First Responder Certificate Program sets minimum competency standards, which will be used to train veterinarians to respond efficiently and effectively to disasters and disease emergencies by directing individuals to pre-evaluated courses that teach valuable disaster and emergency response material. It is not a replacement for nor in competition with the United States Federal Department of Agriculture's National Veterinary Accreditation Program, but indeed it complements it by helping veterinarians understand how they can become a resource, not just to the state animal health official or the federal area veterinarian in charge, which is the main focus of the National Veterinary Accreditation Program. But this program we're talking about today um, also can become, teach individuals to become a resource to their state and local emergency managers. So how does this program work? 
the AVMA, with the assistance, assistance from many subject matter experts and stakeholders, over a course of many years, determined the minimum core competencies that a veterinary first responder should have before being deployed in an official disaster or disease response. Third-party course providers can apply to AVMA to have their curriculum evaluated for consistency with these core competencies. Third-party courses can be approved for one or more major core competencies. Once a veterinarian or a veterinary student completes enough courses to satisfy all eight major core competencies, the certificate is then issued. Any institution or organization that provides regularly recurring trainings to veterinarians or veterinary students that satisfy one or more of the major core competencies can apply to have their curricula evaluated for inclusion in the certificate program. Courses will be added to the program once they are approved so that the available courses will be continually evolving. There is currently no cost to third-party providers to have their material evaluated for consistency with the core competencies. There also is no cost to individuals who sign up for the certificate program if they are AVMA, AVMA members or student AVMA members. Third-party providers may, however, charge a fee for their courses. But AVMA has courses available at no cost for AVMA and student AVMA members, or for a modest fee, modest by US standards, for non-AVMA members. So there are currently eight major core competencies, which we're going to describe. Each of these major core competencies has additional sub-competencies, which I'm not going to take the time in this presentation to describe. The first major area of major core competency has to do with personal and family preparedness. So the participant will understand skills needed for personal and family preparedness for disasters and animal health emergencies. As most of us know, a first responder can only be a first responder if they personally and their family and business are prepared. The second area has to do with understanding one's expected roles in organizational and community response plans activated during a disaster or animal health emergency. So a good understanding of one's roles and responsibility is a foundation of safe and effective response. Third area has to do with situ situational awareness. So the individual will have situational awareness of and solutions to actual or potential health concerns that may be encountered before, during, or after a disaster or animal health emergency. Being able to anticipate and to have the tools needed to keep abreast of changing situations is also a critical aspect of response. The fourth area, the individual will recognize potential impacts of various types of disasters and or animal health emergencies on resources and how they impact animals along with potential solutions and workarounds to those impacts. This competency is based on the United States Federal Emergency Management 
agencies lifelines, which are major classifications of resources that are needed during an events. For example, whether a loss of power is due to a hurricane or a wildfire, the results tend to be the same. The next area has to do with having knowledge of biosecurity and animal welfare principles that are going to be required in dealing with animals and disasters or animal health emergencies. Whether it be appropriate design and setup of an emergency animal shelter or the appropriate setup of hot and cold zones at an infected farm, a fundamental understanding of biosecurity is important. The seventh major area has to do with having appropriate knowledge of euthanasia and depopulation techniques for various animal species and appropriate disposal options for animal carcasses. Whether we're talking about just a few numbers of carcasses or large massive numbers of carcasses that may be required for animals in disaster or animal health emergencies. I, uh, I skipped one, so let me go back. Number six area has to do with the reporting and responding of zoonotic transboundary and foreign animal diseases and how to mitigate potential impacts on human and environmental health. One of the major concerns of state animal health officials, especially for example with African swine fever just offshore of our mainland, is that far too many veterinarians don't know about the signs of some of the most concerning transboundary or foreign animal diseases. And more importantly, they are not aware of the fact that any suspicion of the disease needs to be immediately reported or even who to report it to. Now I'll skip the euthanasia and depopulation and go to our eighth and final category. And this has to do with completing some of the very basic and essential uh, FEMA online courses. So um, IS-100, which is an introduction to the incident command system in the United States, IS-200, which is basic incident command systems for initial response, and IS-700, which is an introduction to the national incident management system are required courses and they can uh, participants can take these directly uh, from the FEMA uh, website. We recognize that there are many more FEMA online courses that will be beneficial for veterinary responders to take, but that these are the three fundamental ones that all responders of any type, should have a thorough understanding of before becoming involved in a response. So how will this program be used? The AVMA Veterinary First Responder Certificate Program is a voluntary certificate program that we hope veterinary response organizations will use as one way of credentialing their volunteers. Again, these are minimum core competencies at an, an awareness level of training. And many response organizations will want additional competencies for their veterinary responders and additional levels of competencies even in these areas. Individual veterinary response organization may, may choose to utilize the certificate as one measure of a responder's preparedness for their own organization. One additional feature that will soon be added to the certificate program will be what we will be calling a state administrator portal. 
This will provide an authorized individual at a state level, such as someone in the state animal health officials office, to have access to a list of those who have completed the certificate program. This will provide a means for those with knowledge about response organizations in the state to help individuals who have completed the certificate program get connected with those local organizations. So in summary, if you are a potential responder, then you will want to obtain the certificate. That will be your main interaction with the certificate program. However, if you're an organization that teaches or an instructor that teaches curriculum to graduate veterinarians or veterinary students, then the way that you'll interface with the program would be to have your curriculum uh, approved and included as an approved course for this program. If you are a response, as a response organization that utilizes veterinarians, then the way that you will interface with a certificate program would be to use the certificate program as one means of credentialing your veterinary uh, volunteers. And if you're an individual at the a state government level, then the way you can interact with this certificate program is to connect individuals that have completed the certificate program with the appropriate response agencies within your jurisdiction. So the AVMA Veterinary First Responder Certificate Program has been developed for use in the United States of America. And if other countries are interested in using this certificate program, we would be happy to discuss this with the appropriate stakeholders. For countries where it doesn't make sense to try and use our certificate program, you are welcome to reference our list of core competencies. How well this program is accepted and utilized in the US will likely determine whether the AVMA continues to develop other levels of competencies beyond the awareness level. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this presentation, and I would be happy to uh, take any questions if we have time for questions. We do. We have a couple minutes. Thank you so much, Warren. How long has this program been finalized and in effect? How is this being communicated to, within the veterinary community? And has this been presented to NASEP? Great questions. Um, the, uh, the program was conceptualized back in about 2017. Um, over the course of two to three years, the, core, the list of core competencies were, were put together and finalized. Those lists of uh, core competencies were, were uh, made available. Um, nationally uh, in um, 2019. In 2021, the program, uh, the certificate program uh, actually uh, started um, with Texas uh, A&M being the first school, being the first third party provider that uh, had courses approved. And shortly thereafter, their students started uh, uh, completing those programs because Texas A&M actually was approved for all core competencies. So, um, and just a couple of weeks ago at the annual AVMA convention, AVMA presented the last three modules, uh, the last three core competencies that um, 
that are required so that now, as soon as those modules are put up on our education platform, then any uh, veterinarian or veterinary student will have the ability to uh, complete all core competencies virtually. Um, I think one of the other questions was, has this concept been presented to NACEP? Yes, it's been presented to NACEP, which I think you're going to have uh, an introduction to um, a little bit later today. We are. And, um, and NACEP was a strong supporter of this process and will be a significant player in uh, identifying who those um, individuals at the state level who will have access to the administrator portal to identify who has completed the program. Is that something that would fall under the state veterinarian's office? It will, it will or... probably depend on, on how NASEP wants, to, on how the NASEP representatives want to handle it, and it might be different in some states. Um, so for those that aren't familiar with how the United States uh, is governed, while we have a federal government, every state has significant state rights, and, the, the, and there's some things the federal government can't override at the state level, and this is an example of one of those. So some states, uh, the individual might be and likely will be through the state uh, animal health officials office or the state veterinarian's office. It's possible that other states, it might be different. Wonderful. Uh, we do have a question. Is this information detailed on the AVMA website? If so, where could we find it? Yes, if you just want to go to the AVMA website and, and type in uh, veterinary first responder program uh, in the search bar. Uh, information will come up about it. Uh, for those that want to actually sign up for it, there will be links there that will take you to our Axon um, mm -hmm. digital education platform where you can um, sign up for the program actually uh, get access to the program, which allows you to see uh, what courses are available where and um, allow you to actually take all those courses I mentioned that AVMA provides, or you can take courses from, from other third-party providers if, uh, if they apply, you know, if they're accessible to you. Wonderful. And then Erica asks, are you using VMAT terminology any at all anymore in the U.S.? Um, we are not using we are not using the term VMAT anymore. That is uh, that is not a uh, um, trademarked name any longer for AVMA. Okay. Thank you so much. Does anyone have anything else for Warren? And I know this is a little out of the scope of AVMA, but do you know if there is a similar program for vet tax and development? So great question. Uh, we receive that question all the time. And um, right now, AVMA has not rolled this out to other veterinary team members, which would include technicians. Um, that is something that's on our radar and we would like to provide that but we also don't want to provide that without input from our technician associations and so it's going to require some work um, the core competencies would likely have to be modified at least somewhat um, to to make them applicable to other veterinary team members. Of course. Okay. This was wonderful, Warren. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing this initiative with us. Well, thank you very much. Wonderful.